any, well, thank you. Thank you for having me again today. Um, if there are any questions about certain, um, you know, specific routes that are really right, right at the front of your mind as we go through them, let me know. You know, you know, we can certainly answer them. But then it did save time at the end for a little Q and A, so we can also, you know, go back and forth as much as uh, as much as needed. So this is the uh, the LRTP update, the Long Range Transit Plan update, which you know is sponsored by the APO, the Area Planning Organization, and the Commission. Excuse me. There we go. Uh, basically, what, what I'm going to do today is do an, uh, an, o um, an overview of both the public outreach and input process, which we started about a year ago with, uh, with a series of meetings, and then a summary of the route analysis and route planning process that you could see, so everyone could see it. Can everyone see the screen, by the way? Good. Um, at the route planning process level, so everyone could see on a route-by-route on a -route basis, and as Tom mentioned, uh, by phase, what happens, uh, what the plan is for the system. So the outreach was led by um, our sub-consultant was SRF Consulting. They're at, you know, also, at, also have a large Minneapolis office. And it consisted of three basic elements. Those were the community lead, leader and stakeholder focus groups, the drop-in sessions, and the onboarding community surveys. So the uh, stakeholder focus groups uh, sessions, there were um, eight outreach meetings uh, held over a couple of days. Some of you were uh, attended those. And then we had five focus groups held at the Mobility Training Center which tended to focus on things like we had, um, you know, uh, folks from uh, major employers, for example, chambers of commerce, uh, academic institutions, et cetera. Then we had uh, drop-in sessions, seven sessions were held throughout the St. Cloud area. And we also had a series of onboarding community surveys. There were four surveys, the, uh, the Metro Bus Community Survey, the St. Joseph Community Survey, which was targeted just to mm -hmm. St. Joseph, and you'll see how that plays in momentarily with the, uh, with the proposals for St. Joseph. And then a Metro bus onboard survey, so we can capture some of the existing, uh, the existing riders as well as uh, uh, the Clipper onboard survey with uh, with that service. And essentially, the uh, the outreach summary, you know, most folks felt that the the, the system does provide a excuse me does provide a valuable service to the community, but there, there definitely was some opportunity for improvement, especially in terms of reliability. Um, some of the on-time performance issues, uh, the east side especially was mentioned several times. And then uh, the desire for some improved frequencies and spans of service on certain, uh, especially days of service. And I want to make that clear. Some folks, what we heard a lot, I mean, we heard a lot in terms of various things, and it's all, all detailed in the, uh, in the final report. But many times we would hear things like Sunday service as, as a whole, as opposed to saying, oh, we'd like later service on a weekday. We heard both, but on some, you know, mo most of the time we heard uh, comments about spans requiring, uh, mentioning days, entire days of service. Service would be needed to new areas, folks mentioned that, but they'd like to see the core areas improved as well, meaning the areas that already have service in the, in, in the urban core. And then obviously the priorities uh, would differ depending on which venue we were at, and which group we were speaking <coughs> with, as to where to focus improvements in the system. The service plan went from, and you can see here is just, a, you know, from the local setting, we did the, uh, the uh, service area profile, we did some outreach and surveys, we went through draft alternatives. <coughs> we had, I believe it was a total of Four, um, as Tom called them, immersion sessions with the uh, with the operating staff here at, at Metrobus to go through all the di different iterations of what the routes might do, and then the the final plan, which has uh, the the service design and then elements of capital, how many vehicles are needed, uh, what the operating costs would be, and of course the implementation plan and schedule. And the idea here is like you know the circle of success, as I as I like to call it. You know, you have to balance a lot of things when you when you're doing a plan like this. And not just you want to address new service areas and consensus building, but you want to have something that can actually be implemented. And this is an ambitious plan. It's, it's in three phases over the next three fiscal years, and you'll see that in a moment. And it is something, uh, you know, it's something that uh, that would be a, 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 that the commission needs to take on, sort of hitting the ground running as as we as we get into further into 2016. So the planning precepts in terms of the route plan. Uh, the first was uh, generally to address reliability issues. That was one of the things that came up frequently in the uh, in the outreach. Uh, maintain and improve service throughout the service area, but also have the system be a little easier to understand, a lot more bi-directional service. And you see the last bullet point that build off, build off of the moving forward proposals. About five years ago, you know, the moving forward plan also had a lot of restructuring of the system. And to be quite frank, a lot of, a significant number of the issues that were discussed and highlighted during the moving forward planning process were still valid if not more so five years later 
and so you'll see a lot of the uh, uh, a lot of the certain elements of a lot of the proposals will look familiar if you're very familiar with the moving forward process, and then also extending uh, coverage throughout the metro bus area to try and, and serve uh, new generators and and uh, other entirely new service areas. So the proposed system plan that's what it looks like at you know at the thirty thousand foot level so to speak, but you you know one of the quick highlights here is is uh, you know the service to St. Joe's. And uh, and and uh, it pretty much much further west than, than the system you used to seeing the system extend now, and then when we go through route by route, you'll see some significant changes in Sartell, and also on the east side of St. Cloud. <coughs> so phase one was intended to be uh, fiscal year 2017 uh, to be implemented. So that means over the course of this of this coming year, the you know the uh, the implementation process ramps up. Uh, phase one includes two. Significant things also transfer policy modification. One of the things that came out of the of the planning process is that we'd like to have a, a system where transfers are, are basically good for for two hours. You can ride as many buses as you might need to complete a trip within two hours. It doesn't have to be that the third vehicle that you get on right now you get a transfer and it's good on the next vehicle. The third vehicle you get on, you know, you need to pay uh, you get another fare. And we said no, you know, it makes more sense, especially with the coming you know use of the go to card. Etc. that it makes more sense to adopt a, a transfer policy that's also actually closer to what Metro Transit does in the uh, in the Twin Cities. And then the integration of the campus clippers into the Metro into regular Metro bus service, you'll see that as part of phase one. And what that does is certain areas now may have service only during the SCSU school year, etc. And we've tried to integrate them so that um, sir, there are services available throughout the entire year in certain key neighborhoods throughout the uh, throughout the service area. Can you and then me one question sure. on that? transfer that the three transfers now we're paying a third transfer it's, and you're saying two hours how do they know it? I mean within that two hours it would is be that, is that card scanned and it's yes. got a time on it and then time. Correct. scan it again the second time and a third and the fourth time and Correct. as long as it's in that 120 minutes it's you okay. got it and including the way that <coughs> Metro Transit does it you could you could do a reverse trip so it's possible you could go downtown come back on this in a two hour in span. the two hour window so long as your boarding is in that two hour window right okay. Your second boarding, your second tap, so to speak. Right. Thanks. So phase one. Ask, ask that question again, Hazel. Two dollars, two hours. Be the the dollar twenty five fare would be good for two hours. Oh. If you're tra if you're transferring, if you need a second bus, right. you'd ask for your transfer. The transfer is good for two hours. If you if you're on a trip that would take a third bus, that transfer would be good for that third bus. So that you wouldn't have to pay another fare. 